With 70% of the Earth's surface made up of oceans and lakes, wouldn't it be an obvious place for aliens to set up bases? And we would never be aware of them. With their apparent advanced technology, they could build numerous amazing underwater structures all over the globe. The following cases expose this possibility. Number 5. Catalina Island, Los Angeles. On April 15, 1966, an object with no tail and no visible means of propulsion was seen flying at speeds from 130 to 170 miles per hour and made no sound at all. It was filmed by a man called Lehman Hansen, who at the time was working for the United States Navy. Since then, these objects have been witnessed on numerous occasions flying in and out of the water and the name given to these objects was USOs, Unidentified Submerged Objects. On January the 26th, 1980, a pilot called Noah Felice and his cousin were flying their Piper Cherokee around the Catalina Channel when they spotted an object in the water with someone or something standing on it. Then the object shot out a beam of light that first paralyzed the instruments and then a second beam forced it to crash into the sea. Unfortunately, his cousin was killed whilst Noah, who at this stage claimed he must have been dead underwater for at least 15 minutes, found he had somehow escaped with relatively minor injuries and believes whoever was in the USO had rescued him and brought him back to life. Number 4. Shag Harbour, Nova Scotia On the night of October the 4th, at about 11.20pm 1967, several people reported seeing a 60 foot long lit object that later descended into the water causing some people to panic, believing it was an aircraft crashing into the sea. It was described as having had several orange glowing lights and eventually sunk, leaving behind a trail of yellow foam half a mile long. Fishing boats and the Coast Guard went out looking for survivors, however nothing was ever found. The military sent out divers who followed up with an extensive search. When more information came to light, it was found that the object was first spotted on radar coming out of Siberia. After crashing into the harbour, it then travelled underwater up the coast to Shelbourne where it came to rest on a submarine magnetic detection grid and was supposedly joined by a second vehicle. Military ships were anchored there for a week in an attempt to recover the object. One diver said that after witnessing the object claimed it was not of planet Earth. Other military witnesses also claimed there were two objects, with one trying to assist the other. On October the 11th, the military suddenly called off the search, where later that evening an object was seen departing the area. A book was written about the incident called Dark Object by Don Ledger and Dick Stiles. Number 3. Malta, 1971 In November 1971, Maltese fisherman Paolo Zamet and his crew were about 20 miles out to sea south of Malta when they spotted a large dark object floating on the water about 900 feet away and believed it to be a black submarine. A very bright light then flashed out from the object causing them to shield their eyes, but when they looked back they saw a number of small humanoid men, each about the height of a 10 year old child, walking about on top of the object. Some of the men were wearing what appeared to be belts attached to tools or some other equipment. Then after a few minutes the figures jumped through an opening in the object's hull and disappeared. There was then a bright flash causing the fishermen to look away, and when they looked back the object had suddenly vanished. Number 2. Lake Baikal, Siberia On the 17th of April 1987, Valery Rutenstov describes that at about 12.20 am, a flying saucer appeared approximately 150 meters above him, and from the center of the object was a phosphorescent purple ray. At the edges of the object were yellow portals, and the diameter of the object was about 70 meters, and it was silent. Then the object slid smoothly away and sailed along the shore of the bay. On the 9th of July 2009, at about 10 p.m., Sergi Konechnik and his son were on their balcony when suddenly there appeared two glowing balls with a yellow core and an orange-red surround hovering over the water. 
in July 2010, Nikki Determin describes an object with a shining green light flying above the lakeside and then above him. Vyacheslav Lalevichich was on a yacht on the lake when a huge shining disk about 500 to 700 meters in diameter appeared below the surface and glowed for about three minutes lighting up the yacht before shooting into the sky. Oleg Chichilin was also on a boat training students when they saw a glowing ball floating on the water that started to slowly fade then turn into a red ball. For a while the red ball lay on the water but then gradually sunk under the water. In 1982, seven military divers were reported to have come across aliens under Lake Baikal. Alexei Tivinenko said at a depth of 50 meters they met swimmers around three meters tall dressed in tight fitting silvery suits. They did not have any scuba or other devices, just helmets on their heads. Number one, Puerto Rico, 1963. One of the most famous incidences happened in March 1963 involving USS Wasp aircraft carrier off Puerto Rico. Sana picked up an object moving at 150 knots, 20,000 feet below. The object would propel to impossible speeds then stop for a while as the Navy would catch up. For four days, the fleet tracked the unknown object, recording its speed. There is nothing in any naval inventory anywhere in the world that can approach anything remotely that speed, then or now. The object descended to a depth of 27,000 feet. The pressures down there are so vast that they would crush any vessel that went down that deep. 13 captains were entered the incident in their ship's logs. A great deal of the strange activity around the island has centered on the area known as El Yunque. Jose Orlando Goles, who works for the Puerto Rican government, lives close to El Yunque. He says, many people have seen UFOs flying over the water close to the surface, he said. One evening at around 1 a.m., we saw an object with many colored lights flying next to the sea just over the surface. It seemed to be dark underneath and had lights, mostly red and blue. Then it angled and moved upwards. It made a humming sound and seemed to head in the direction of El Yonke. The number of UFO sightings over the waters of the Triangle, as well as USOs below, has been a constant since the time of Columbus. The early sailors and explorers called the underwater disturbances wheels of light. UFOs have been seen from ships, from shore and from experienced pilots with a specific concentration near and on Puerto Rico. There has been a tremendous surge of UFO sightings in Puerto Rico since the early 1990s and for many of the Puerto Rican witnesses they're absolutely convinced that there's some sort of massive futuristic insulation deep below Puerto Rico under the ocean bed.